receber a, a transmissão da nossa escola bíblica. through the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, united by the living word. Brethren from every part of the world participate of the same service jointly in the same body, in the same spirit. the system of transmission, the members of the Maranatha Christian Church of the entire planet live a moment in unity and fellowship like the Hebrews uh, used to enjoy in the depart from Egypt and uh, when Jesus was on earth before his death on Calvary. People from every part of the world have been reached by the eternal gospel and by the message of uh, soon return of the Lord Jesus. Brother and peace of the Lord, we're speaking here in our center of communication in Vila Velha, the state of Espírito Santo in Brazil, in this Sunday school. And we inform that it is a transmission that is exceptional because since this is the first Sunday of the month, but we'll always be uh, streaming content to our brethren as there is a need for a few pastors that need the support and the help of, uh, of the transmission, especially on the first, including in the first week of the month. And this Sunday school, we have a dynamics a little different than the one that the brethren are used to in the other Sundays, in the other Sunday schools. We're going to bring here a couple of information and a word is going to be given inside of, of what the Holy Spirit of God has shown for this moment of His work. And we have here this morning a few brethren that are visiting us. We have a deacon from São Paulo. We also have a brother Gildo from Brasília. And also a sister from Carapina that came here to visit us this morning. She is present here in the studio participating with us live from the transmission of Sunday School. Very well. So we're going to relate to the brethren a few uh, announcements. Many sent to us, as usual, every week. Many sent many, a lot of information about evangelization, information. But since the dynamic today is a little different, we're going to in, uh, present here a few quick announcements. And the, the remaining that arrived are going to be delivered next, this coming Sunday school in the morning. We're going to inform the brethren about a seminar 
that happened in Bahia with about 800 participants. You see the picture of the seminar. And that what happened yesterday. And also yesterday in Indianapolis, you had the opportunity to be with the brethren there. You had a group of about 800 women gather in the Manino Lapis uh, to the, gather the, uh, Pastor Eugenie in the south of Bahia. It was so sent to us. It's going to be spoken about uh, many contributions that were sent, letters, messages, emails that have been sent from all of the country and also from abroad. And we're going to highlight here Milan in Italy, Zurich, Fort Lauderdale in the United States, the brethren from Rome, Milan, Zurich in Switzerland, the brethren from Rome, Milan. We also spoke about Italy. We are, there's a participation, there's a complete integration in Brazil and also abroad to the Sunday school and the glorious experience that we are living. And especially, particularly speaking, the book of Nehemiah has brought some things amazing to us, great depth, speak, spiritually speaking, to our days. I also want to highlight the contribution of our sisters there, Esther. She sent from St. Mateus, her pastor is Roger Bastos. She is an, uh, an adolescent. The adolescent here on the left hand side of Pastor de Duchy on the picture, she sent a little letter. There are a couple of pictures of the, the letter, very friendly. Pastor Zedici is going to make mention about this contribution of Sister Esther. Uh, also want to send uh, our friendly greeting to our brethren from the Church of Lemmy. They are in Lemmy, in Rio de Janeiro. They are watching the Sunday School live. And there's a detail that we have in this Sunday School, which is about 40 people they have lived and experienced with the Lord, they are new converts, and they have found in this broadcast of Sunday Schools something that is amazing. We send our greeting to our brethren from Lemmy, in the state of Rio de Janeiro, the Church of Lemmy, in the city of Rio de Janeiro, capital of the state of Rio de Janeiro. We also want to share with the brethren. We spoke about it before with Pastor de Chi. want to relay to him we relate to Pastor De Duchi and he understood that it would be important to share with the brethren. We have a pastor here in the city of Villa Valley that has a sick son. It's uh, something that causes concern. He is hospitalized. And yesterday night, this pastor sent to the group of pastors from the, here the, of the region, he sent a request of prayer you know, on behalf of his son. And soon after, uh, a brother enter into the same group and make the same invitation conclam conclamation. Let us pray for our little brother, Daniel, who is an adolescent. Let us pray for him throughout this night. We are going to pray from 3 to 3.15 in the morning. In a, fraction, in a matter of seconds, there was a group of pastors from here, uh, the region, that placed their name there, so that throughout the entire night, there was a chain of prayer of the pastor of the region on behalf of that young man, that adolescent, a son of a beloved friend. This is leaving what we have learned in the Sunday schools. If we we cannot be apart from each other, we have living this experience and it has brought a great joy to us. For me particularly, it was a wonderful experience to see the way and direction of the brethren, and the struggle of a, a brother in his family, and the, what the fellowship of the body brings us amazing benefits. And I wanted to share with the brethren this experience of life last night, throughout the night. So very well, Pastor Zuduchi is going to bring to us the dynamic of this Sunday School. Very well, my brethren, peace of the Lord. Yesterday afternoon, we had uh, communicate with a group of sisters from the city of Guarambi in Bahia and also Annapolis. We, we sent a, a message to, uh, via satellite with them. We are very happy with that contact with those sisters from that region, not only the sisters, but also the pastors, workers, deacons, they were there present. But today, 
we know that it is a day in which the pastor has his own commitments, pastoral commitments, uh, some deacons, and the introduction of children, change of classes. So there is always lots to be done on this first Sunday of the month. However, Pastor Josias already said he made reference to the fact that a few churches do not count with the presence of the pastor. And that's why they they expect the word from satellite, which is important for this, those churches where there is no pastor, where there is no special ecclesiastic event in those churches. So for those we are speaking, and especially we are going to divide the topics here. Firstly, I'm going to to take a, the opportunity to tell the brethren that everything that we are witness witnessing at this moment, it is impossible to do, to make mention, a statistical reference to everything that is taking place. We have received contributions from all over the country and also from the world. Just so the brethren have an idea, only this week, I would like even to show here on the on the projection. I don't know if it is possible. If the brand there, oh, they already know what is what it is about. Oh, oh, this is. I'm just showing the contribution from the four states that most contributed this this week, this weekend. This doesn't mean that in all the contributions. The occurrence uh, has been like this, but in, generally speaking, they occur in this way here. Preferably, they have been in first place, the state of Minas Gerais, in second place, the state of Espírito Santo, a third, Paraná, and a fourth, Rio de Janeiro. Of course, that the regions there, so then the brethren can see that regions in the state of Minas Gerais will see the Church of Valadares. This may be the greatest number of contributions, but there are other cities there in the valley of uh, of uh, still the region of Muriaé and other cities, Leopoldina, other many cities in Juiz de Fora, Cataguas. They all send their contributions. And in Belo Horizonte, Belo Horizonte is in second place, the capital of the state of Minas Gerais, then first Valadares, and then Belo Horizonte. In the state of Espírito Santo, in Brazil, we have the greatest contribution per city, Domingos Martins. For this last contribution for this week, it was Domingos Martins. And soon after, we're going to find other cities like Vila Velha and Cariacica. And we also have Serra. And I confess that I have not seen contribution from the city of Victoria. It doesn't mean that those contributions may not have come. There are many. There are, ma there are thousands. Today, in our calculation, we have received more than 10 million, million participating this year alone. They are all contributing. This is the result of the work of the pastors, and we were, were able to find and identify a large number of pastors. There are helping the stimulating the churches to contribute, contribute, and our reach is not in what we are saying, but it is in what we are receiving. What we are receiving is much more than we are, we are saying. No, we need to give a contribution. We open sometimes a part of the the fan, but the fan is only open with the contribution of the church. So we feed and then receive the result the results. So here we are living off of the results. And we like to share with the brethren the results. In Paraná, also in Brazil, we have a region that is uh, a little uh, closer to the east of London. Uh, this other region that is here, Hollandia, this region 
is a region that for me it's very special because there's a group of pastors here that gather there are six or seven pastors and anointed and deacons there is an involvement of the purse the church and the youth and the ushers and the pastors ahead and including they are very much linked to the church of londrina with pastor lamarcus Masu actually that has commanded all of this and we're going to give to them uh, a task which is to give a contribution for the construction of the annals of what have seen and received with regards to the book of Nehemiah this will be here for the world for the church for the world that is out there for the ones that are going to go to heaven and also for the ones who are going to remain here on earth they are going to delight with the teachings that have been given and the book of Nehemiah will be a landmark of a church that leaves its marks as a church of faith that will depart one day but will leave a legacy a history particularly and especially for Israel to tell Israel that what was prophesied back there that was rejected one day the church that lived here accepted it and its teaching was great regarding the history of his people and these people they will be in its great majority in this battle will be reviewing everything that the church was able to witness and it is interesting if I remember in this study that we're going to have I'm going to have a short word here at the end about the ring and to me we're going to share with the bread something that may be interesting for the church in our days we're going to back to go back now to our report there is a lot to be said but what brings great joy to our hearts is the participation of the pastors there's a massive participation of the pastors commanding the church and the youth the women and a few even they, they don't want to get involved they think that the youth may be be alone but but they have to get involved to help and preach what the youth and the women and the deacons and the anointed are producing and that's what we're doing here we have no reason for not to do what we are doing here because they bring what is the most important it is something that is coming from the body the body is the one that's producing the food for the flock for the sheep and it's not a, a personal matter an individual matter it's not because you are so smart and know everything about Bible no but the ones who are receiving revelations and my brethren naturally we are living and feeding off of this word that comes from the churches and from our, from our brethren I'm going to describe something here <coughs> regarding a few contributions I'm going to speak about something that is very a friend of mine is an annoying friend she's Esther she's that little friend she's 12 years old here it is she's 12 oh here it is uh, there's another annoying little girl here they both bother me all the time I even forgot their name here but, uh, 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 the next time the pastor sent the names but I forgot them so many good people that I forgot this one here she wrote well uh, her alone sent all this huge letter here and it, she spoke about Nehemiah and as a pastor to help and send this letter imagine if everyone sent all this stuff here that's the annoying little girl sent me here I'm gonna say her name because in fact it was already said her name uh, she's going to start sending me 300 letters if if I keep saying her name so you saw yourself here now behave behave yourself she's going to she told me that she's going to the seminar 
of the family are going to run away from her and from this one as well, so that everyone knows. And she's even eating her with the plate here. The Bible says like this, a uh, joyful heart brings beauty to the heart. Uh, and I tell you, a uh, clean soul eats better. So now I ask you, the contribution that was given here about the Sunday school from Bahia, from Ohio da Juda, we have a picture of a, a group that is very nice. That was, that was the side of the church, a little church, the pastor had the deacons and the sisters smiling. Everybody that had a, uh, everybody that sees a, a camera, photo camera, smile. I, I did it as well. So this is also from her. Look at this, what she sent to me, Pastor Gideti. After she wrote all of this stuff, I have forgotten. Her name is Esther. Oh, Esther, stop being annoying. <laughs> so look, Esther, you're my friend. Pray for me, and that's all that I need. We have a report here. I cannot read all the reports. We have someone that wrote here, I have a report from Chicago, from the United States. Our brother Daniel, an engineer, he's responsible for the church in Chicago. We have here also the brother Chito Magalhães from the city of Cabo in Recife in Brazil. He's saying the following, we could extend the, the time for the Sunday school. My brother, Chito, it's not possible to extend via sat satellite. Why? Because, because when you finish at 10, the brand that work on satellite, they have a time in order to edit what was said. When it's, it is 11, 10, they have 10 minutes to edit. So then they will do everything, they put everything in order in order to, to transmit because of the the time zone, but there is another time zone, they have to re-stream it. We are getting ready to reach other countries, and in other countries we are going to reach Latin America, North America, and uh, this is according to what, uh, it is according to the reach of our satellite, and so here is the explanation. We have said that the pastors, the workers and ushers, when they finish the Sunday school at that time, in 10 minutes, they will bring the, the service to a close. And with the church, they contribute what was not said on the satellite, or even something that was said that was not completely clear. So the pastor has this responsibility. And I want to say something to the brethren. The experience that we have had is the following. Every Sunday, every Monday, even on Sunday, I receive phone calls. Look. There's a group of people here that came to visit, and they had ended up staying because the the evening uh, class, even service, they came in the morning to Sunday school, and then they asked, "Hey, look, at night, how about on the night service?" And sometimes the pastor is free to preach whatever he wants because or because an evangelization service. And generally speaking. Generally, the pastor picks up what was taught in the morning and he, he teaches at night. He preaches at night about the same topic. I'd like to remember that what is from the Holy Spirit is didactic. It is the word from the Greek that is related to the operation of the Holy Spirit. So, when a man reaches the project of God inside of what is, what is the best for the understanding of man, which is which is followed by the operation or precedes the operation of the Holy Spirit. So there is an organization. So so it is called reinforcement. What well, is very common in the morning, there is even a, an expression that is known for everyone. The word volatile verb. So you hear, you hear something here, maybe sometimes you don't uh, keep it in your heart, but but then 
in 10 minutes after the, the broadcast of Sunday school. So there is a constant uh, understand because Israel was not good, because, no, no, we need to make the application for us here and to understand what we, dis, what, what we are understanding for our own lives. Israel has passed. Nehemiah was on his own time. The Holy Spirit is now operating in our days in a different way. So, the example for us is this, is the gift of the Holy Spirit bringing the revelation, what was hidden in the Word. So, Bible study is revelation, which is in the Word, and that the world does not know. And the brethren there in churches, many come from other places, they know very well that the work of the Holy Spirit is the revealed Word. Jesus is the door. He is the, the Bible. So, where is the door? The Bible is going to show you. The path is revelation, which is beyond the door, which is beyond the Word. It is not the ladder. The ladder is here. The ladder is the door. You know, okay, so now you are at the door. Many die at the door. And Nick, he, he was a priest that died. Eli, he died at the door. There are many that were not able to enter through the door. The lame was in the time of Peter and John. He was at the, the gate, the beautiful gate uh, of the temple. But he only entered into the temple because he received the blessing of this period. So on the Pentecost, he entered into the, into the temple because he didn't need any help from alms. The whole work of the Holy Spirit is is for those who are lame, that are at the door, they never enter. Oh, the pastor said this, and I, I'm not agreeing with it. So you can you can be like that, continue lame at the door. But what matters is the ones who have been healed and going to enter and walk in the presence of the Lord and testify. Everybody knows all this, but it's well known. So we have a church from the brother from Aracaju, a church at Atalaya. He works with the women there, Pastor Luis Carlos, Deacon Andre Martins. And speaking about a new convert of the experience that they are having, and I would like to tell the new convert that he wants more about the topic. Oh, Pastor, I want more. He's a new convert. And the ones that are older in the faith, they, have, they know everything, that they are not worried about what the law has. But there's a pe new people that is coming that has thirst because out there, there's no bread anymore. They're only a uh, glass of water. I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not, I have nothing against anyone. I'm not buying anything. I don't need anything other than the grace of the Lord, that, of, like everyone who is here. We just need to allow the Holy Spirit to operate. It is a gift. Use the gifts, spiritual gifts. And that's what we need to put in order here today. Because the spiritual gifts, they are necessary for the fellowship so that we may, may live with one another and also for our relationship with the Lord. Because the trumpet will sound and only go up the ones who hear the sound of the trumpet. And that's why we're saying, you will not. That's the direction. Do not forget. Do not discuss it. Everybody has sins. We are subject to this in this world. But look, what the Word says, when the Lord comes, you need to be ready. So, we have an Evanilda Nobri, who is a sister. She is saying, we cannot be with this without this wonderful teaching. She's telling this to me. She's telling this to me. It's like if I don't allow this to happen. That's right, my sister. Pray. Our walk has to be like this. This wonderful teaching from the Word. The more we study, the more we learn from the teachings. My brother, how wonderful it is. Very well, my sister. She's from Fortaleza in Seattle. Look at this. So she's from another country. <laughs> it's a state in Brazil. Ivonette also, she's speaking about her experience with uh, her husband that became a convert on Sunday school. 
he lived an entire life and was preaching, preaching, but one day when he went to a Sunday school and the Holy Spirit spoke to him, broke the barriers, the wall was rebuilt and now he's there serving the Lord. Now Sunday school is bad, right? For conversion is bad. People cannot, should not invite anyone because you invite people who stay and it's not going to be a spot on the bench for you anymore. <laughs> so, Sister Aure Lúcia from São Diogo, also in Brazil, his sister, her pastor is Pastor Humberto. She, he is a fighter. And she uh, had an experience in which she said, we became victorious. Somebody sought after her with the necessity. And if you are an assassin, my sister, if you, if you don't come to Sunday school, you end up losing your battle at home. And she said, yeah, that's it, very well. Not only her, but there's a people that understand that every day we have our work, we need to feed our bodies every day. And a few forget and they think that every day, and even including the, sh the day for the Lord, get ready because we're going to talk about it. It is interesting that we we say things that people shiver. They and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. You can shiver and act like this while you are shivering and thinking that you are being uh, being offended. That's all right. It is just a sign that you have life. The dead they has no reaction. If you were dead, you would not react. But this is necessary, my brother. That's what you need. That we, I need, and that we all need. A fellowship is established in the position that the Holy Spirit places us all in this flock of the Church, which is the body of Christ. So now, Sister Aurea Lucia, I already spoke about there, about from Sister Romanelli from Milan, the youth from Rome, the Church in Rome. I want to say one thing. I have pride. This is my pride. Nobody. There's nothing wrong with being proud. There are a lot of people that people have lots of things and they don't have pride. Because, but I went to the Church of Milan in Rome. My brother, I remember Paul writing his letters to the Church of Rome, and I was thinking, my God, are we going to Italy? Are we in Europe? How about Rome? And today we have a church in Rome. And my brother, I went there. I Oh, I've been with the brethren from Rome, a church very well organized in the little corner there, in a specific place. And my brethren, I remember the primitive church, the church in Rome, uh, right next to the Colosseum, where they killed the Christians, just beside the church that ended up changing the, the direction, the doctrinary direction of the primitive church exposed there. My brethren, this little group of brethren, they are united, praying, crying, sending the masses. And now I ask you, I hear, we here as Brazilians, are we not going to read and listen to what, what they are saying, that what they are understanding there in Rome? My brethren, this is the same work there in the tombs of Rome, is the same work of the ones who died on the fires and the crosses on the mouth of the lions the ones to live the harshest moments of the history of the church. There it is, the Church of Rome. And my brother, Rome, uh, Pastor Bergson, may God bless him in a mighty way. Only because of the fact that you, because everything that was written was very good and wonderful. But the address for me, it is very important. And I also want to speak about Munich. I spoke with Pastor Josias. I have a group in Munich, in church in Germany. And I'm going to share an experience very important. I don't know if you have time. Well, I'm going to share it. We have a sister here in one of our churches. And this sister had a vision. And she called the pastor saying, Pastor, we have a vision here. I saw there. I was in the city of Munich. She never went to, to Germany, but she said she was 
before a cemetery, right in front of a cemetery, and I saw a tomb. And this tomb was erected up on top of whoever was inside. And was who was inside was a soldier. And on top of that, of this tomb, there was the helmet of that soldier and the, his the soldier's gun up on top of the helmet. And she knew that he was in Munich, and that man had died in a battle, and he had left a note, a message, writing saying that he was going to depart, but he was praying for Munich, for the for Munich as a nation, uh, as uh, the city of Munich. Today we have a, a group gathered in Munich in Germany. My brother, we have in other regions there. But in Munich, it established a work. Of course, the things are, are very difficult. We have had even lives that came from there. They were integrated. But now, we have a group in Munich. In Germany today, is a country that loses the greatest number of the ones that are called evangelical. In Erbo, you cannot even say that there are evangelicals. There is actually a Christianity that has no commitment with the Lord or with the Holy Spirit. They have philosophy of what they understand, that God has to do what they want. So they have their culture, the culture, the, the human thinking. But ye, there, last year, into uh, not not last year was two, 2017. 400,000 evangelicals left the churches. In 2018, 600,000. And I keep thinking, who is going to replace them? Who is going to take this space? Uh, bulldozers are coming and removing the those harmonic uh, made out of the tubes. They yeah, destroy everything, and that's what it is, my brethren. And we are there. We, s we are being oppressed by the world with everything that is out there, but testifying, giving testimony that Jesus is at the door. But I want to go back here uh, to say, speak about the work going back here to our brother Daniel Barcelos, his age. His brother is from the church of Santa Monica in Vila Velha, Espírito Santo, Brazil. He was saying here, speaking about the church, uh, speaking about the church, the body, and, and, the, body, and the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. We, uh, he was speaking about the body of Christ that is living, what the Holy Spirit is bringing as a sign of life. Here we also have uh, Alex Moro from Valadares, including here many other brethren, brethren here. And there was gathered deacons, ushers. They are bring, experiencing a revival. Many deacons, ushers, the revival are taking place inside of the churches. So a spiritual gift, the brethren are turning to seek the Lord again. They are glorifying the Lord. They see salvation. And my brethren, all of this that we see, and witnessing. Here is, they are saying that in Boa a group of you, a very good group from Pernambuco, there are other here saying that we are praying for our life. That's what it is. Our brother Ari from Maraju, the Vila Velha here, very close to us, pray for the son of the passion and pray for me. I'm praying for our life. This war cannot stop. Oh, I can't stop, but the work of the Holy Spirit cannot stop. Uh, look at this, uh, Pastor also Claudio da Cruz from San José del Valle in Rio Preto in the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He is saying that the word that was preached in the service at night and also the teachings was wonderful. And uh, amazed a couple that was invited with what he is receiving from the part of the Lord, uh, a couple that has already become convert. We cannot let go of the Sunday school. I'm just giving here a couple of testimonies. I could have given all, share all the testimony here. We have a, a list of more than 200 testimonies. And we would like even to say the church, for example, 
Freguesia in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and other church here. The brother in Junior, from Pastor Everaldo at Freitas, which is very interesting because the pastors are perfectly integrated and they are giving a contribution very good to the church because they go to the youth, go to the pastor, go to the work of the Holy Spirit, and they come here and we are receiving the food. Glory to God. And we also have a church of Pastor Elias Amaral, he has more than one church, and he's always present, he's the one who determines things here. We also have the brother Faletesh from Valparaíso, also Espírito Santo Brasil. We have Diego, Diego Rosado, a brother that is. It is interesting because this young man has an experience. I'm not sure, maybe. I want to make sure that this is the one. He's from Valadares. He's a youth. He has had an experience that that he stopped answering what, what was his. Well, from the Sunday school, he was touched in order to relieve this moment from sports. And he's now he was practicing sport. And we need to be at the disposal of the pastor in order to invite and give testimony to your uh, brethren or their also youth. They are being awoken. We need to speak about the his vigilance that he needs to have. He's from Valparaíso, Goiás, another state from Brazil. Oh, I just want to say that Zambalati Tobias, they're uh, walking around there to be careful with them. We need to have a special care with Jose because he leaves and then the sun is raised, risen. The Jose, they come up with something here and there, whatever he never wants, now he wants. So be careful. We have under the cruise from Makaya. He is speaking about the renewal of the church that are baptized with the Holy Spirit. My brother, is there anything better than that? It is, it is interesting that we, I read all this. I was, I rejoice and I'm sorry for the ones who, that I unable, they are unable to contribute with this work. You also have a, a message from other brethren here, youth that already spoke about in Rio de Macaia, Magé, other cities, neighboring cities, and municipalities, large ones, we have received frequently. São João de Meriti could have taken control, taken over Sunday school together with Cape Martin region. Area. They have the means. There is a group that has the means to come here, and that's the teaching here. My brother, you have the word Macaia Magé, that region there, and I want now. We have five minutes left, six minutes left. I'm going to say now, I have to stop all of this because there is a lot of stuff here. We have 300 of those testimonies all this week. But when to speak about the text here, you can put the text. You're ordering it to me. Deuteronomy. Going to stand up. If I forget to ask you to sit down, you can sit down. And Levi, he said, let your tuming and your urine be with you, your Holy One, whom you tested at Massa, and with whom you contested at the waters of Meribah. So my brother, the urine and, and thurim and urine were the resources that the Lord gave to the priest, the high priest. Only the high priest could have done this. So then you see in Ezra and Nehemiah when Thurim and Urim had to be consulted. First, why? Because when Ezra was bringing the people to reconstruct the temple, he saw all the list of what was written of the priests. And he had observed that there are a couple of priests that uh, became priests that were not 
part of the lineage of the, of Levi, but now only the only priest there are the, from the lineage of Levi can enter, and also Nehemiah as well. So now you're going only going to participate on the food of of the the priests, the ones who from the people of the Levite, whoever goes through the test of the Thurim and Urim. So Thurim and Urim had has object has the objective to give to the priest of the and also the high priest the ability to judge. To be able to judge. So your Thurim and your Urim they are for your to your help. So everything was prophetic. Here it was speaking about it was speaking about the mysteries of the Old Testament. This mystery died with the high priest. So if somebody goes to Israel and attends the school that they have there about uh, Thurman and Urim, they are not able to reach what we have been able to reach because they don't have the experience that we have. They think that the Thumin and Urim was not to consult. It was not linked to the operation of the Holy Spirit. But when you go to the original in Hebrew, you see then you understand that they are on the prophetic sphere, the Thumin and Urim. So then your Thumin and your Urim. Only the high priest, only the high priest has the breastplate. And he had what, what some they call like stones that was that died with them. That information died with the high priest in the Old Testament. When you go to the songs of Solomon, and Jesus gathered the church in Israel, then you see something interesting. The church saying the following to Israel: "I hope that you were my brother, because if you were my brother, you, we would meet on the streets, we would kiss. Nobody would." say bad things about us because the church it looks feels like the church is enemy of Israel and the faithful church is not enemy of Israel and Israel is spiritual Israel is not going to be enemy of the church so then they continue the conversation the church says the following you would have taught me the priests they would teach me the secrets the priests they would teach me everything that didn't come for us why it didn't come for us because they didn't have revelation they stopped on the letter and they even think that the Urim to me is something uh, uh, superstition. And it is not. When you see Masa and Meriba, a beloved, to, so you see the text that I speak about the loved one, it's, it is Jesus. And your Tome and in your room is prophetically uh, uh, speaking about Jesus for your Holy One that you tested on Masa. Masa was uh, Masa was a place where the people went through trials. Was a place where the people went through, and Meribah was related to the waters. So it is speaking about the sacrifice of Jesus, of the pain, of the bitterness, of the cross, and that you tasted in Masa in the waters of Meribah, my brethren. All the process here. And all the words that are placed here, your Holy One is speaking about Jesus. And it says, says, and look at this, the text says, now continue in the same text. So now, uh, Songs of uh, Solomon. I'm sorry. I began speaking about Songs of Solomon, I forgot. I hope you had fed me with the, from the rest of my mother. I, you would have taught me. You would have taught me everything that the Old Testament would have taught me that would that died with the priests. I would have given you uh, smells, a smelly wine. In eternity, the the faithful church is going to meet with uh, prophetic Israel. This and Jesus will be present in this meeting, where in which the church will be communicating with Israel and with a spiritual Israel. We are not removing, we are now removing here the political Israel. Was the Israel to whom the promises were being made in the Old Testament? 
the illusions of the man that disappears the death of six millions during the Second World War in Germany, just to show that flesh for us has no purpose for us. So whatever is in Israel is not simply for them to live in the land that they need in order to earn the right to be owners. Everything was pointing out to eternity, and inside of eternity, religion and religious are not judged or politicians. And what is spoken is about the prophetic promises and of the events that took place at the time. Brother, well, I'm not going to continue because we have come to the end of our time. But prophetically speaking, the role of the priest, which is the role of Jesus, because they they use the role of the of the high priest and speak about the two th men in Rim. He was speaking about the uh, role of the priest, the one who has the blessing of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit was not poured out. He was resting upon the people in the Old Testament. But the high priest had the resource in the same way that the, the prophet had. The king, when he heard the prophet and answered it, he was inside of the plan of God. So, my brethren, I'm going to finish here. There's a lot to be said. And I hope that, in fact, this, the service tonight may be blessed in the church, where the deacon, the pastor, and the usher will be able to use the same word and remembering that we our, our proof is here in the Urim to me. Light, which is revelation, and truth is the truth of revelation. Our only concern is this. They didn't understand. Israel did not understand this. But we need to understand because our high priest is alive and reigns forevermore, which is the Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless everyone. Peace of the Lord. The brethren can finish their Sunday schools in every church, and soon we'll be together with the brethren. May God bless everyone. The peace of the Lord. Morning is a morning of uh, great celebration. This is a special service because, like in every other service, there's always it's always a special service because the Lord is always present. And this morning we're going to have here the promotion of our children. I'd like to invite Pastor Sam to be here present. We have we're going to yeah. The first promoted is Stephanie. 
But sadly, she was not able to be here present. Mas nós estaremos orando por ela também, né? E a próxima é a Manuela, Manuela Simão. Manuela Simão. I'd like to invite Manuela to be here in the front. I'd like to invite uh, a teacher to be here in the front to receive her. Manuela, you're alone, but that's all right. Very well. You can come, Dulce. Receive our sister Manuela. Now in the class of the adolescents. Very well. It's a great joy, right? Very well. Amen. Manuela, you can kneel down. We're going to pray for you. It is with great joy that we do this. For the church, for us, for the teachers. It's a great victory. Because we see the word of the Lord being fulfilled and the prophecy being also fulfilled in our in our lives, in our church. The growth of our children. Not only the physical growth, intellectual, but also the spiritual growth. That's the most important. Because this growth, this teaching, nobody will take it away. What was being recorded in the hearts is being written in the life of Manuela. Nobody can take it away. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to pray with the laying of hands, the dickens. Glory to Jesus. Amen. We pray for the precious blood of Jesus as we introduce before you whatever she is, Stephanie, and also your daughter, Manuela. I want to pray and glorify you because to this day you have helped and instructed and guided and taught the path that they need to walk on. We praise you, Lord, because they are growing in your presence. We thank you that they are growing in your grace and understanding for the honor and glory of your name. We glorify, Lord, for, your, for their parents, for the life of each one of them. And we ask, Lord, that you may continue to act and operate on the life of the families here represented so that your daughters, your two daughters, may be cared for by you, Lord, so that may, they may never lack anything. And the spiritual blessings that are being put out upon Stephanie and Manuela, that they it may be every day in your house, as they have been instrument of praise and adoration, glorification of your name. Bless your servants, Lord. Answer the supplication, the plead of each one of them, and place each one of them in the position that is pleasing to you. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Very well. You can stand up. Now you can follow the teacher. Amen. Glory to Jesus. We're going to pray, finishing the service. Firstly, we're going to have a word of glorification. Lord, I want to praise your name. I want to thank the Lord for this wonderful feast this morning. For the blessing of seeing or the tune of your servants grow in your presence being promoted for the glory of your name. Lord, we praise you, Lord, because you have cared for your flock. You have loved this church and have made us walk in your presence. To you, all the honor, all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. The children made kneel down now. The intermediary. Lord God, we ask a blessing for your servants, Lord that kneel down before you, Lord. We ask that you may protect them from any evil or, or every teaching that is contrary to your word, Lord, and that your children may be living witnesses of your care and of your power, and that they may always, whatever they go, that they may be a blessing for the homes, for the families, here on your house, and also that they may shine the light and revelation of Jesus. Bless them in every aspect of their lives, and that they may bring harmony, bring, Lord, uh, that they may live in your word, Lord, and that your teaching may be etched in their hearts, and that they may always choose the better person, which is to be under your direction. And now we ask, Lord, that in your name you may receive our praise, 
This service in adoration to your name, and that we may come to our homes, and that this day may be a day in which we may be inviting our family members, our friends, and that you may give us boldness to preach your word. Use your church with might, is a prayer that we say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren can sit down. Our next service is going to be tonight at 7.30 p.m. I would like to ask the brethren to invite those who have been a target of our prayers, of our concern, and that the Lord may bless us in a great and mighty way. We send you back home with the peace of the Lord. We have a meeting with Group A. Yes, but with Group B. David, with you. Oh, also Group C and Group A. Peace of the Lord.